Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, welcome back, everybody. She is fantastic in helping guys navigate women. Really, that's what it is. You know, dating, mm -hmm. um, relationships, all that that comes with it that many guys are not equipped for. We think we are, but there are certain things that we don't know how to deal with. And that's why she helps you find your true connection. One of those things mm -hmm. that we're not really equipped to deal with many times is rejection. Rejection. A, yes. Just a challenge. And uh, tomorrow from True Connection, dealing with the rejection, is here. Welcome back. How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to be here because I really want to put some hearts and minds like in a more relaxed state, a little bit more at rest with this extremely difficult issue yeah i would love for it to not hold you back so much different scenarios the rejection is the the topic umbrella today and then you have different scenarios within mm -hmm. that um right. i could pick one of those let we'll hit we'll hit up a bunch mm -hmm. of them yeah one, sorry tomorrow which one which one should we do so Conscious dating is being present. And that's the theme song in everything I do when I work with my clients, because conscious dating just means you're going to slow down. And every so often, like every day or two or every couple of weeks, once you're getting a relationship, you're going to slow down and really think about where you're at. Is this what I want? Is this what I need? And that is what's going to save you potentially years of time and money and then profound heartbreak. So if you realize on a first date, we're not a good match, you realize at six months, we're not a good match. That's more difficult, of course, but it's not like three years in mm -hmm. and then bam, you've got, you know, children, family, friends involved. And it's like, you know, true heartbreak, devastation. So yeah, rejection is just part of that because, and, and if you can get more comfortable with the concept, you're going to get more comfortable with breaking it off when it's time instead of talking yourself into staying because of course it's so much easier to stay who you're with but end it sooner than later um, just out of respect for you and her mm. and then when you're not as afraid of rejection you can get back out there after you've done some healing you're ready and bam you're back on the horse so to speak yeah. do you find that after you've dealt with rejection, be it, you know, mm -hmm. somebody out, they say no, um, yep. whatever it might be, it's easier to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you, you know, you get a tougher skin. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, plus when you start doing things like we talk about most every week, your deal breakers list and your needs list. Once you know what you want and what you need, your confidence goes up. Mm. And when your confidence gro goes up, when someone says no to you or they say, no, I don't want to go out with you again, or your relationship ends, you realize, yep, when I look at those lists, we didn't have it all going on. This is actually a blessing. Bam. I'm ready to get back out there. Yeah. Um, and, and you know what? It's almost like the analogy I got, as you were saying that, is you're going to build a house. You don't mm -hmm. have blueprint. Right. You're just going to grab some yeah. lumber and a hammer and some nails and just go at it? No. Right. So this is yeah. the same thing. Your wants, yes. needs, deal breakers, list all of that, mm -hmm. kind of your blueprint. And think of how if you're building that house, if you have a plan, you're like, I got this, man. I'm just going to go. Let's let's yep. work on this as opposed to, all right, I guess the stud goes here. I think a wall goes over there. When you have that mm -hmm. list. You're you're jumping in. You know what you need. Right. It is it well, is kind of yeah. defeating too. If if you start realizing that that person isn't meeting the list, and and like you just said, you know it's hard to break break it off. Mm -hmm. You know, right, right. Well, and you all when you're building a home, you regularly revisit the blueprint. So that's what conscious dating is. You're revisiting the blueprint so that you never get off track. Like you're so enveloped in that delicious like fog of love which yes i want you to be in there but you can take 10 minutes out every so often and really decide where are we at and you can do this with your partner too where are we at you're going to sit down together how do you feel here's where i'm at what do you think about trying this how do you think about reconnecting in this way and then again with every relationship you get more confidence and you have more gratitude for why all those other relationships ended mm. Because as you progress and you grow and you heal, 
like childhood wounds, high school, you know, all the things that happen to us in life that just happen to every human, your confidence goes up and you're going to attract a different caliber of woman. And when you're ready for a high quality woman, they are going to start coming into your life. And then every rejection too then is like, oh, well, that was either a bullet dodged or um, somebody that we wouldn't have worked out anyway, because she just wasn't in a good place. She has somebody, she doesn't have time. And really the biggest umbrella concept that's going to help everyone here today is rejection is not personal mm. ever. It's about my bag. If I reject you, that's my baggage saying no, or something crazy. Like you look like my crazy uncle Carl. I cannot do this. And that is the only reason, or I have a boyfriend. I have you know, my parents in a health crisis. I don't have time right now. I just had another baby. Like there's a million reasons that people are going to say, no, they're not about you. They just met you. Yeah. Or if you've met at work and you've been flirting for a long time at work, they're, they're conflicted about that maybe element of it, or they're your neighbor. So they just, I mean, there's obvious conflicts with dating someone at work or a neighbor. So it could be something like that, but really, truly, when you come back to that, like sticky note it on every mirror in the house, rejection is not personal. It's on them. It's on the rejection. That's it. And yeah. I I mean this in a very humble way. And I it, there's I never, you know, go like this to myself. But I will say this that I've learned. Um when you get to a place where you know you've got something good to offer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it takes some time. Yeah. And if that person either rejects it or isn't in line with it, bye bye. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Just no, that's you can go now. It's all right. It's not yeah. serving what you have to offer. Um, assuming that you have good stuff to offer. You know, your morals yes. are there. You're kind. You're caring. You're mm -hmm. compassionate. All of that. And if that's not good enough, I'm I'm sorry. Oh, well, you know, it's it's you know, right. we're, that's good. You know? Well, and we can all get to that place. That's the goal. That place that you just described is where really with some work and effort and just mindset shifts, you can you can absolutely get to that place. So conscious dating exercise number one in the rejection scenario is writing down everything that your friends, family, coworkers, and exes have said they love about you. What do they appreciate about you? Make a make a long list. I mean long exhaustive list. And then add to that, what you what do you like about yourself? I mean, you're hanging out with yourself all day. Mm -hmm. You know what you have to offer. And you're doing that for numerous reasons. But number one, so that you have that confidence when you approach a woman. Because there's nothing sexier than confidence, right? You know, I you exude a completely different vibe when you know what you bring to the table, which yeah. then attracts a different caliber of woman. But also a woman is going to not in so many words ask you what you have to offer, but she wants to know. That's absolutely what she wants to know when you start chatting in those first few dates. And that will gradually unfold over time, the more you experience life together. But she wants to know that too. So in not in, in a million different ways, she's going to like try to figure that out about you. So you need to have the answer for that too. Mm. And yeah. when we say that, that confidence, it's not a, cocky confidence where you're oh just, no yuck you know, we have no. to differentiate you're not, <laughs> you're not being a jerk here it's just like you figured it out yeah. and you're right it takes time uh yeah. you go through some bad relationships mm -hmm. you go through yeah. you know weird situations you know it's it's a mm -hmm. it's a progression but you know when you get there you're in a better place and and mm -hmm. and you're in a better place with your help in getting there so that the rejection isn't taken so much personally. So would you, let's say you're, yes. you're new to the dating world. You just started, you know, you're kind of fragile. You got out of a relationship and then, you, you know, somebody turns you down. It's like, <laughs> why, why, why? That was right. impossible. And, right. and after time, when you figured yourself out and what you mm -hmm. want, it's just like kind of just rolls off. All right. Well, right. Well. Yep. And it takes practice. Um, so the other conscious dating exercise that I always recommend to people when they're so Rejection is the worst. It is. I, so another kind of dating exercise is to write down all the other things that you've overcome in life with the potential of rejection, right? Buying a house, a job interview, all the things that are really difficult. 
or negotiating something with a family member. I mean, that's so difficult. So you put yourself in that situation. You did it anyway, even though you were scared to death. And you knew before you walked into that job interview, if I don't come across with an air of confidence, like they should hire me, they're not going to. If my vibe says I'm not qualified, you're not going to get hired. So you did all that self-talk and all that work before you walked into the room. This is the same thing. You're scared and you're going to do it anyway. There's a very high chance of rejection. You're going to do it anyway. It's just like maybe you had to go on 10 job interviews or 20 mm -hmm. to get the job that you really wanted. It's the exact same mental preparation walking into it. So really write down all the other success stories that you have, whatever area of life that could be in. You had to, you had to take your neighbor to court, right? How nerve wracking and awful. You did it anyway because it was the right thing to do. Yep. And that seeing that list will really, again, raise your confidence to a new level. Yep, it's scary. I did it anyway. Right? That's the definition of courage. Yeah. So it's it stinks. It's horrible. And the other thing you got to remember is you're doing it to women repeatedly too. So you both need that grace and permission to be able to reject people. You don't want a woman going out with you that doesn't have time or isn't in a place to receive the, all the love and affection and all of the amazing things that you have to offer. So when you think about it that way, you are grateful re for rejection. Yes, there you go. Because you now go. the path is clear for someone that does have time and would really value you. So I have two, two thoughts tomorrow that came in my head. Conscious dating we talk about, if you're going to make those lists and you're going to mm -hmm. think about it, do it in a quiet spot. Yes. You really, yeah. you know, just need to get in your zone and really think about it. I did it over the weekend. I did it over the weekend and uh, came to some conclusions that are impactful. Um, but I replayed things in my mind. And I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, just what you mm -hmm. said. It's like, what, what works? What's not working? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then what you said before, you're going in for a job interview and you're thinking to yourself, I I'm not going to get this job. I'm not. You're not, you're mm -hmm. probably not because mm -hmm. you're putting out that negative energy, that lack of confidence is, you know, kind of oozing. You don't see it, but it's there, that vibration you put out mm -hmm. there. Same thing when you're yeah. going into that first date, it's probably, you know, but there's probably going to be the only one now when I'm going to get rejected on the second right. date. Um, I will say only go on a date unless you're really, really feeling it really, you, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's, this got a lot of potential. I wouldn't even waste time with, with, you know, man, eh, just go see what you'd like. Ain't nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't bother. Right. <laughs> not... Well, that's why you always get on that phone call before you go out so For that sure. you can really get a sense. Do we have like potential? How's the conversation flowing? I mean, everybody's shy, awkward, nervous, but they're less shy, awkward and nervous on the phone. And so even like um, some people have like a zoom date, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Start out with the phone, then move to that. If that's your comfort zone, then move to the real date, but at least get on the phone just because it takes the pressure off. And when you get to, as you slowly increase your confidence, you will put less and less pressure on the phone to call on the date and you will be at more peace, more settled. And then she perceives you as even more confident mm -hmm. because you're relaxed. Yes. Yeah. And it does, it's not easy, you know, right. yep. maybe it is for a small percentage, but it mm -hmm. takes time to get there. Right. But how many times, uh, you know, guys, how many times have you thought about, all right, so we're, we're texting, we're messaging in an app, whatever it is, um, got to the phone call, making plans to talk tonight, blah, 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 whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And then you're about to dial and you're like, hmm, <laughs> what do I talk about? How do I start? Yeah. How's that going to go? As mm -hmm. opposed to beep, 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 done. Right. And, and you just jump in. It's, a, it's like you don't even think about it because you already, you know, the, your little, you already have it. You already have it. Right. And, and sometimes I like to think of one or two things that I'd like to talk about in that situation mm -hmm. or maybe a funny way to start the conversation based on coming off of the messaging. You know, there might have been right. an interesting situation that came up and then mm -hmm. you know, up from there or whatever. Um, I've even not even said hello. I just jumped into something goofy, <laughs> but but it's relevant based on the conversation. Right. 
from the from the messaging, whatever. Um, but you just get used to doing different things because you you've taken the mm -hmm. time and you thought about it. That's conscious preparation for whatever stage that you're at, because if you do have a couple of questions prepared or you've been laughing to yourself about something you talked about on the phone or something you want to remark on in her profile, once you get on the phone, you want to inquire more about that. Then how are you going to feel walking into the phone call prepared, confident, like you have this figured out and you're going to do the same thing for the date. Sure. So all those little things, I mean, um, like I have a freebie that I give away, like just to build those confidence steps before you even go on the date. So oh, wow. you can, you can just be yourself. Like, cause when you bring the true you forward, not only does she get to honestly assess like how she feels about you, but she's going to like you more because she wow. knows it's the authentic you coming forward. Wow. And you feel great too. Yeah. You're like you're like the safety net. <laughs> <laughs> You know, oh, wait, all right, so I'm going to make this phone call. I'm going on the first date. Let me reach into the uh, True Connection bag of tricks and, you know, what can I use yeah. here? Uh, wow, okay, interesting. Yeah, and then when it's over, like this type of rejection might be your three-month relationship ended because three months is a big marker, six months, nine months, a year. So then mm. you're going to sit down then, and again, another conscious exercise is why did it end? How do I feel about how it ended? What do I want to do differently next time? What type of woman do I want to attract next time? So that you then you're moving up the ladder, getting closer and closer to what you want with every day, every relationship you're going to get, you're getting there. Yeah. And all that conscious work that you do is going to get you faster. And that's not to take any of the romance or that special magical feeling that you want to feel with someone. We're talking 10 minutes after the first three dates, once you get to be exclusive, it's once every two weeks. And then once you get, you know, move on past six months, then once a month, I mean, you're always doing this, but it's less frequent so that you catch it when you realize you're no longer a good match. Hmm. And yeah. it's not, a, I, I think we need to view it as a positive thing, not a negative. Because you might oh, look. Oh, yeah. Right. All right. Let me go through the list. No, no, mm, no. Mm, mm, mm. Right. If it's more of a, this is serving me better and and the other person too because mm -hmm. it's not a yeah. fit um interesting the more and more we talk about the conscious dating thing the more and more it is so <laughs> critical um uh, i want to go mm -hmm. back to what you said before three six nine months all, why are those mm -hmm. markers there I, you know, oh that's just that's just what the data shows i think with time you've been through more so three months a lot of times you're in an exclusive relationship by that point and you're saying, I love you. And now you're meeting family and friends. And so as those big moments unfold, that's a big discovery process. Then six months, now you're really, you're on a schedule. You know, we meet this often every week. These are our nights together. This is what we do. And then because you've really let your hair down by then, then you're like, um, you can honestly, you can just assess more honestly by then. Plus you've been through some things you've argued by then, right? You've gone through some things and some holidays, maybe some tragedy in your family, some difficult situations. You get to nine months, you're thinking about the future. And so then you're thinking about all the things that aren't going well and the red flags, the green and yellow flags. You're thinking about them in a different way through the lens of how long do I want to be with this person? And then you get to a year and then you're like, yeah, we need to decide. But statistically, that's just how it plays out. Yeah. Wow. Because as we're talking about this, I'm rolling a recent relationship in my mind. And and it yeah. and it's three. That was one um uh, milestone or, or yeah. you know, what we're yeah. talking about. Um yeah. you know, like you know, meet some of the family. Six months, yeah. nine months. And it's yeah. interesting. It, it it holds true in my mind here. And yeah. I'm going to go back mm -hmm. to other relationships. Um and and try and you know remember what was coming up you know three six nine but definitely makes a lot of sense it really does right. and through every stage every threshold you need to just be honest about where you're at um so that one isn't thinking we're getting married and one is thinking maybe in five years we're getting married but the conversation's not we're getting married is because it's way too far away you want to make sure that all the 
signals in the conversation and your playful, flirtatious, loving language is not misleading someone the other way, that you're really open and honest about where you are, what you want, and the progression and the timing. And I mean, this if if someone's asking you, like, while you're chatting, what do you want out of a relationship? Be grateful. This person is mindful, present, and knows what they want. So don't let that scare you. This is just a really major concept that if you're not in the same place, why date? And then as you go along, you're going to discover more things. Yes, I thought I wanted a long-term relationship, but now that we're three months in, I don't know, because now things from my past are flashing, triggering, where am I really at? So it's important to honestly assess yourself as you go along. And then have those conversations out loud, sit down in a loving, respectful way with your partner and be honest. Yeah. So you don't want her expecting a ring on your one year anniversary when you're like, I'm a mess. And I don't know if I, you know, when I'll be how many years away before I'm ready to marry. What about let's go hypothetical here. Let's say you're and I'm going by what you said, you know, at a nine month mark, you know, um, even a year. Mm -hmm. I'd say at the nine month mark, you have that conversation. So where are we at? Like, what are you feeling? What do you want? Mm -hmm. and, and the other person says, you know, I don't know where this, I don't know. I can't tell you where it's going to go. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Is that a reasonable response or should there be more definitive at nine months where the relationship is going to go? I think if it, whatever's honest is what's appropriate. Because it, it, you can really feel like you're being honest when you start the relationship with this person that you really want something long term in your open to marriage. But then as you get triggered and things from your exes in your past come up, are you dealing with them? Are you willing to deal with them? Are you willing to seek, you know, counseling or journal or talk? I talked to someone, seek help from a coach. What are you going to do with that stuff? Because you're either going to deal with it with her or someone else. So eventually, you know, to get what you really want, you are going to have to wrestle all that to the ground and uh, just just grow into, you know, the level of peace that you deserve. Mm -hmm. So whatever's honest is honest because it really can go like this, you know, up and down. And you can decide to go through the ups and downs together or because you're not in the same place, just separate. The now I know we're talking about rejection. Um, I'm going to pivot in a different direction here for okay. just. Um, okay. Let's say you're in a relationship. People reveal themselves along the way, right? You, you know, yep. transparency comes through. And uh, what's your experience with that? What are your thoughts on that? In terms mm -hmm. of somebody, you know, the other person you're with revealing, oh, there's a side I didn't really realize. That's right. interesting. And that's normal. Like, expect that. That's just normal. Like, um, for instance, like if somebody gets triggered about money with their ex and something comes up with money with the two of you, you're going to see them have a trigger or maybe right. explode. And you're like, um, that doesn't sound at all like me. And where's this all coming from? So just having the patience to ask them where it's coming from, because we can all work through triggers. It's just that they need to want to work through and the triggers and that you want to do it together because it's also very unfair for either one of you to have somebody dumping their junk on you all the time. Like we are personally responsible for our triggers, our junk, our baggage, and we are responsible for just managing that. So we don't hurt someone else with stuff mm. from an ex. And so yeah, just expect that. Like, I mean, that's happened to all of us where you're just sitting there with your mouth hanging open going, what just happened? Exactly. I, I didn't do that. I'm not that person. Or, I mean, I give, I give people, you know, that have been hurt on, that have been cheated on, for instance. So if they come to me and they know right away that they can trust me because you feel it, right? You just sense it. And then you notice patterns and behaviors, acts, actions and words matching. But their past has taught them not to trust their own instincts. So what they don't trust is not me. They don't trust their own judgment because they've learned their judgment has sucked in the past. Yeah. So then I'm just patient with that, but to a point, because I'm not willing to pay for someone else's mistakes. So you're going to figure this out. You, I'm going to give you time to like prove myself. And then if that's not 
like if they're just not far along in their healing journey, that's okay. Like that they just might not be able to receive someone trustworthy yet. But then I just end it just for both of our sakes. I mean, mm -hmm. they still have stuff to do and I deserve to be trusted. I mean, right. Right. Yeah. And, and it really comes down to when they're, you know, that trigger comes up and it will, like you said, uh, yeah. those situations will come up. You never know yeah. your life and ping. Uh, then you need mm -hmm. to make the decision. Are you going to deal with that from the other yeah. person? Um, and yeah. sure, there's some things you can work through and some things you really can't. And it's, right. but, but what does it do? What does it do? It goes back to the conscious dating list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, you yes. know, the deal breakers and the things you'll mm -hmm. tolerate and not tolerate. Um, how do we find every, um, everyone has triggers. So you are going to have to sort through triggers with anyone that you date. It's just a matter of how do they respond when you ask about it? Where did that come from? What's that about? Can we work through that together? And if they don't want to, then you've got a whole new set of information of we're going to have this. This is going to be a pattern. Well, what you said, I, I, I truly believe rings true in that it's going to come up. Mm -hmm. So be prepared. Right. You things yeah. will come up, so you really know. You know, you have to accept it and then decide how you're going to deal with it. Uh, how do we find you? Best place to, uh, you know, help the guys out. What do we do? You can connect with me on Instagram at Tamara True Connection or on my website trueconnection.coach, C O A C H. Would love to help you figure this out. Are you in the wrong relationship for too long and it's hard to let go? How to approach women? How to approach women that you appear to be beyond you? Yes, those beautiful women that are standing there that everyone's afraid to talk to. They're not on my yeah. dating apps. <laughs> I mean, well, you see them in person and you're, or you see a really gorgeous woman. You're like, how did he get her? Yeah, because he talked to her. He had the courage to go up and take the risk and talk to her. Can That's I, can how I, they got together. Can I tell you real quick, and we're out of time, but it, this this kind of happened to me today. Um, routine blood test, right? I'm there, and a woman walks in. I recognize her from the gym. We're on a totally other side of town, so it's kind of weird. Um, and I just wanted to go up to her and say, hey, do you work at, at you know, insert name of gym? I didn't. And it wasn't that I didn't have confidence, but I'm going to tell you right now what it was. Her vibe. Her energy, even at the oh, gym, is just yeah. she oozes just you know standoffishness and just not oh, you know, this yeah. there's something there and you know and i just i'm not feeling it. i want to just even just be friendly hey how you doing you know right. I know you here here today you know getting blood tests whatever but right. she just seems always closed and it's uh but isn't that a great reminder of how you, wherever you go before you go in you sit in the car and you open your energy up so that you can receive because they're going to flirt with you, too. You might not even recognize it as flirting, but she knows she's flirting with you, even though you don't. Maybe, but make sure you can receive it. And so your eyes are open. So if she's there in the grocery store, that she's at the gas station, you see her. Yeah. hundred percent. And my yes. my intuition, and I've tuned into it a little bit better over the years, she's not ready for, you know, no. she's something's, right. something's up. And it's, you know, it's, it is what yes. it is. But um and I could have just went over anyway, but it was just mm -hmm. like, eh, you know, what's aside from saying hello, you know, she's closed. Why bother? She's closed. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent closed. And it's a shame, but um, you're yeah. not, you're open for business and ready to help everybody That's else. Right. Out. Yes. So definitely the guys. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having me. This is like our 12th in a series. Oh my gosh. I didn't even seen that. Long. I know. We got I know. A, Incredible. We've on 12 dates. Absolutely. And we have three more dates left. <laughs> wow. I gotta, now I got to go back. I got to do my conscious dating list. And then I also have to figure out, you know, three months, six months, that kind of thing. I'll work on that next time we get together. Mm -hmm. All yeah, right. Sounds All good. Right. Thanks for That's having awesome. me, Steve. Thank you. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world. This is the Podcast Business News Network.